All right, I gotta film this one fast. Hopefully my microphone's on. Anyway, I gotta leave for work in like a few minutes. So anyway, uh, we all know that as Starfield launched, it was not performing well, especially compared to AMD graphics cards. Uh, and so we were all hoping maybe we'll get an NVIDIA driver update or, you know, maybe the game a little performance patch, something like that to help out NVIDIA GPUs. Well, with NVIDIA's latest driver update, um, there's some mention of Starfield here, although it's small, but it seems that along with the um, driver update, they're also pushing through an OTA update. Um, so these are some uh, tweets or X's or whatever the heck you call it now. Uh, we have a new game ready driver supporting Mortal Kombat 1 and Lies of P. We've also pushed an over the air update to enable resizable bar profile for Starfield to give gamers some additional performance. The rebar profile will be automatically download after the 537.34 game ready driver is installed. He also says you can force the over the air update to be pulled down by restarting your system and you can confirm the rebar profile is downloaded by checking the log here. And he gives some program files here. Uh, I haven't checked that myself, but I believe you'll have to enable um, show hidden folders in the Windows File Explorer in, in order to actually see that folder. But anyway, so I immediately downloaded it, got up super early this morning and uh, started to test out some Starfield. So let's go ahead and just play that uh, here while we talk a little bit. So what are we looking at? I didn't have time to test out a ton of GPUs, but I did test out one GPU that I tested at launch, the 4060 Ti 8GB, um, uh, on the original launch driver without the rebar profile and all that. And then on the right hand side of the screen over here, you are seeing this morning tested on driver 537.34. And as you can see, there is a performance benefit but it's not massive. We can see here that at 1440p ultra settings with FSR variable rate shading and dynamic resolution scaling all turned off to reduce any kind of variables. Uh, we see that it's 39 FPS on the new driver versus 37 in New Atlantis. That's a 5% uplift, but I did test out a variety of settings. Uh, what we're looking at now is if you actually use the ultra preset, which enables FSR resolution scaling at 75%. I did not have time to test this out with like any of the DLSS mods or anything like that. So this is the game unmodded. Uh, here we're seeing 46 FPS versus 43 FPS on the old driver by the end of this benchmark pass, which is a 7% uplift. So that's definitely not nothing, although it's certainly not enough to, you know, catch up to the better performing AMD parts. I wouldn't go as far as saying that this is like crazy well optimized now, but it still looks like free 7% performance at those settings. I also tested out the high settings rather than just the ultra settings. One of the things I noticed at launch is that the ultra settings seem to be kind of bugged on Nvidia GPUs and some other places like Digital Foundry and I think Hardware Unboxed uh, dug into it as well in their optimized settings guides, uh, found out that it was the ultra shadows specifically that was causing problems. Um, Anyway, at high settings here, we're seeing 46 FPS versus 44 with no resolution scaling. So this is native high preset with all that turned off. Uh, and this is 46 versus 44, that's a 5% update. So we are at least getting some benefit uh, from that uh, at these settings. Although still, you're not running the game at high native 1440p on a 4060 Ti at 60 FPS. If you do go to the high preset though, which enables resolution scaling with FSR all the way down to 62%, that's pretty aggressive. We do now see the new update push the average frame rate in New Atlantis here from 59 up to 63, which is a 7% bump, which is nice. And again, it does break that magic 60 FPS uh, number. Although if you're on a variable refresh rate display, you know, the difference between 59 and 63, you know, whatever, but 7% is 7%. Uh, gaining extra performance in this game is certainly welcome given the performance uh, being where it was at. Again, I'm curious uh, if it, how, how this scales with, um, you know, modern DLSS and all that. But anyway, I also thought we should check out other resolutions. So this is 1080p and we're back to the ultra preset without any upscaling turned on. And it does once again show some improved performance, but we're going from 46 FPS to 48 FPS. This is hardly, you know, getting you from the mid 40s to like 60 FPS at 1080p ultra. And again, I still find it pretty disappointing 
that a uh, $400 uh, mid-range graphics card uh, that's fairly uh, brand new is not able to max out the game at 1080p, uh, 60 FPS in the more demanding areas. Again, this is New Atlantis, which, while not being the absolute most demanding area in the game, is one of the more demanding areas in the game. And I did also test out 1080p at the high preset with no upscaling, so this is native 1080p high, and we did at least see it bump the performance here from 56 to 59, so closer to that magic. 60 FPS number, uh, which is again a 5% bump at these settings. So basically, absolutely across the board in a variety of resolutions and graphic settings with upscaling and without upscaling, we fairly consistently see an uplift anywhere from 4% to 7%. So the average probably being there is somewhat, somewhere around a 5% performance uplift on this particular GPU. I would have loved to have time to test out more, but that just was simply not an option today for me getting to work on time and getting you this video out, uh, out in a timely manner. However, I do have a few final thoughts about this. Number one, again, this is saying that this, wa this wasn't really a driver update that's doing the, the lifting here. This was actually just enabling resizable bar. And first of all, not every NVIDIA GPU is going to support resizable bar. It'll just be the 30 series and 40 series to my knowledge. And even on some of the 30 series cards, if you bought them um, uh, kind of earlier in the launch cycle, you might even need to do a firmware update on your GPU, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, in order to enable resizable bar um, on the GPUs. Uh, if you have older older NVIDIA GPUs, I did not have a chance to test here, but if the performance uplift here is just coming from resizable bar, then you're not going to see that performance uplift on a GPU that doesn't support resizable bar, obviously, right? So, so there's that. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think hopefully that means that we still have room for a proper driver um, optimization update maybe still coming in the future, and that this was just kind of getting some performance uh, additional on the table as quickly as possible. Um, remember that AMD GPUs don't require NVIDIA to, you know, so not NVIDIA, but obviously for an AMD GPU, but AMD offers their smart access memory. That's kind of their branding of rebar. And that's just something you can enable through a driver toggle in their software. Um, whereas NVIDIA takes a whitelisting approach where unless you want to use third-party apps to do like hex editing stuff, um, basically you have to wait for NVIDIA to enable the rebar support and, um, Anyway, that seems to be what they did here after noticing that it did uh, provide some performance uplift. The last thing I'll mention is um, we're still waiting on some more improvements from Intel, but they have had a couple of driver updates uh, taking the game from completely broken, you cannot even run it, to maybe you can run it, but I haven't actually tested it yet myself, but I think they're still working on some performance improvements over there on the Intel Arc GPUs. And again, if you guys are interested, I will try to monitor performance updates as they come out. Uh, again, since I have some of the launch performance numbers for a few GPUs, now we have this, uh, we can maybe track this over time. I've got to get to work. I hope all of you have an excellent day.